After a long night watch, the daily routine starts later than usual. Nicholas, a wealthy Viennese master craftsman, gets out of his simple bedding, consisting of a linen sack filled with foliage, a linen bedsheet and a woolen blanket. He shares his tent with two comrades of similar high status. For medieval people, hygiene was a matter of decency as well as of health welfare. Bearing the luxury of a bathing house, Nicholas has to get along with a bucket of water, a linen towel and a wooden comb while on campaign. At home, Nicholas would follow a strict daily regime of hygiene, washing himself all over with a metal wash bowl filled with diluted lye and possibly even a luxury sea sponge. At least two times a week, he would visit the public bathing house for a thorough bath and a professional shave. Of course, in the field, he has to make due with what he has got on the spot. With white teeth on one and very fine teeth on the other side, combs played a very important role in lice prevention. But as a man of status, Nicholas is also required to look his best whenever he can. Dressing is done the same way as in a pure civilian context. So linen underwear is also the basis for clothing here. The linen shirt that is closest to the skin and exposed to sweat and dirt can be washed at high temperatures, which is crucial for keeping up a hygienic standard required in his time. The legs and feet are covered with woolen hose, which are rolled down on hot summer days. The hose has been fitted to his leg, so they sit very tightly. In addition, Simple turn shoes are worn. Thoroughly greased and filled with straw or hay on wet days, they are Nicholas' all-weather solution and he will go through several pairs a year. Like on a normal day, a woolen kirtle is put on over the shirt. Men most probably wore old and well-used clothing in the field. Nicholas Armour will get the kirtle all dirty anyways, so a simple piece will do. This green one is of a style typical for very simple clothing around 1350. The arming starts. The kettle hat and the mail is kept in an oiled leather sack to protect them from moisture. For 1350, we couldn't find solid evidence for textile armor worn under mail by infantrists in our region. Some sources indicate that only the kirtle was worn underneath.
After a short command to his comrades, the militiaman jumps into his mail shirt. Grease and dirt are removed from face and hands with a still wet towel. To protect armor and men from overheating in the summer sun, a surcoat is placed over the mail. Most pictures sources from Austria show a clearly civilian surcoat being used by infantrists. Belt and dagger knife as side arms are worn together with a belt pouch. This fashion phenomenon is quite short lived and based on sources from 1340 to 1360. Plate gauntlets are the newest addition to infantry equipment around 1350. As infantry becomes more and more important, a way had to be found to protect the hands effectively while fighting with pole arms. In service, Viennese militia was allowed to carry swords, a practice reserved for nobility under normal circumstances. The high fashion cattle hat and the mentioned pole arm, in this case an early form of a speedum, will probably be enough for our soldier to see the next sunset. So good will. <laughs>